checkmate that is why after pushing the central pawn forward the black horse has to move to the river bank and red will continue in the following manner check and red will be just one move faster than the than black the double ghosts attacking uh, attack is one of the most feared and one of the most commonly ways of attacking using the pawns in such a manner once the pawns are able to get to the elephant eyes uh, the enemy cannot cannot just ignore the threat uh, this position is a very rare position showing the might of the pawns uh, the match happened in 1975 red was the general uh, the legendary grandmaster Hu Ronghua uh, from Shanghai and his opponent was Grandmaster Tai Furu from Guangdong. As can be seen, the red pawns are already uh, not far away from the Black King. And but how could Red further his attack as Black had still had a cannon that was protecting? In the match, the legendary Grandmaster played uh, K5 plus six. This would allow his king to aid the pawn in advancing to the elephant's eye and thus make full use of the other pawns so this was how the kill went on uh, like defended in this manner trying to protect the other elephant eye check check and Black resign. Uh, why did Black resign? Because Red, uh, for example, if Black would be forced to make this move, otherwise, if the Red pawn advanced, the King would be check. It would be a checkmate. So by moving here, check, 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 checkmate. So that was why Grandmaster Chai uh, resigned. Uh, of course, uh, there could be a change in the order of the moves. Red could start with p5 plus 1. So the rest of the moves will be similar. Check, check, and red will simply be faster in the kill. p4 equals to 5 will result in a checkmate on the next move. Okay, um, this position was from a book by Master Shang Wei. Uh, although it is a chariot pawn combination, the key piece would be the pawn, as Red's uh, most important issue now would, to, would be tr to try to get the pawn as close to the Black General, Black King, sorry, as close as possible. Uh, this is also a very practical technique to be used in actual play, and it can be a very major threat that the enemy cannot um, ignore okay to begin with the pawn is located on on the pawn rank and it's, it is about two to three moves away from the black king so the challenge would be how would red try to move the pawn to as close as possible to the black king the correct way would be to start with using the chariot the Black King cannot be allowed back into the palace or its original position or Red will not be able to win and Black will turn the tables instead. If Black, if Red had not started with R8 plus 4 and tried to be greedy with P7 plus 1, this would be what would happen. And if Black were allowed to turn the advisors, uh, it would not be able Red will not be able to attack or win the game anymore. So, uh, with this check, the Black King is forced to the third th rank, and the Red Pawn is advanced one intersection forward. Uh, at this place, the Pawn will become a very big threat to the Black King. And Black will be forced to defend in this manner. Uh, A5 plus 4 
would not be a possibility this is because check and checkmate so as you can see once the pawn has reached the cannon rank it will be a major threat so if um, Black were to move the advisor in this manner to try to give his king more space to run uh, Red would continue attacking with R8-1 uh, Red cannot be greedy with R R8 equals to 4 because uh, Red would not be able to continuously threaten the uh, Black King anymore and Black would simply play P7 equals to 6 and prepare to sacrifice material for a kill of his own so the correct way would be to retreat the chariot one intersection for the check and red could red will continue pushing his pawn forward uh, red could also play r7 as 6 as seen in the previous variation so as can be seen in just a few moves the pawn had advanced from here to the elephant eye where uh, basically black would not be able to resolve uh, or any checkmate threats from red anymore checkmate so uh, we'll go over this bot again because I think it's a very practical and useful bot uh, during my play over the internet I've lost and I've lost to many opponents with this attack because I was careless and I, I have also used this attack to win some of my games so this is a very very practical technique to learn from and it is from personal experience so the short review checkmate uh, please try to remember the key points of this kill uh, in the next example I will, we will be uh, touching on the topic of the charging pawn attack the main idea of the charging pawn attack is to try to get the one of the pawns to the center of the enemy palace uh, whereby it will be a very big threat uh, this game was played in 1988 in one of the Asian Shang-Chi Federation championships uh, red was Grandmaster Zhao Guorong from Heilongjiang, China black was Tsai Wen Go from the Philippines uh, as can be seen in this position it will be red's turn to move black the black pawn was now threatening the red chariot and although uh, red would be at, have an advantage uh, black would seem to have enough defensive forces so how would red uh, increase his initiative and win the game red started with r4 plus 5 threatening the throat rank and preparing to attack the central advisor this this was a very brilliant play and we shall soon see why in the match um, black played h5 plus 6 to try to protect this rip file uh, what would happen if um, black did not do so and say for example if he advanced his uh, pawn to try to attack uh, red would checkmate in the following manner check check the black king cannot move to this file because the red king is already there so check check a brilliant sacrifice and a smother pawn checkmate uh, incidentally this skill is called a 7 suppressing master or 7 bullying master checkmate and uh, which will be gone which will, I will do another video on it later on so back to the game uh, black tried to defend with r5 equals to 6 and red continued with his plans check check okay so at this point uh, black had regained lost material and cleared and decimated the black advisors so how would red continue uh, black tried to defend by chasing the cannon away and red chose to trade cannons but 
uh, but the but black would not have anything of it and it was at this point that the grandmaster played a very brilliant move with um, p7 equals to 6 so with p7 equals to 6 black would be in a dilemma uh, the red pawn was only once one move away from the centroid and uh, but how would black play? black chose to capture the cannon instead check and at this point uh, there will be nothing that uh, black can do to prevent r3 equals to 4 checkmate so this can, this can be seen from this position to this position it only took 9 plies to do so and red's uh, final attack was using the pawn to attack the center and even though uh, Red had to sacrifice his cannon uh, it was well worth it so this is one of the very brilliant kills by the legendary Grandmaster uh, incidentally Grandmaster Chao Korong has a nickname called the Northeast Tiger whom he inherited from his master uh, another Grandmaster called Wang Jia Liang Uh, last but not least in this tutorial, I will be showing the old pawn searching mountain attack. In Xiangqi, when a pawn has advanced to the enemy's bottom rank, it's considered to be uh, less of much less of a threat, and some people even consider it, consider it to be next to nothing. So uh, pawns usually do most damage when they are at the pawn rank or at the cannon rank. However, there is an attack called the Old Pawn Searching Mountain attack uh, whereby the pawn will be moved to the enemy's bottom rank and it will be able to deliver a very uh, powerful attack. Uh, the position shown here was from an ancient manual called Strategic Considerations uh, or Tao Liu Yuanji in Chinese. I think it is the textbook material on this topic and I have included in in my book on basic kills. Okay, to begin with, uh, we can see that uh, the red pawn had already advanced to the throat rank but black would seem to have adequate defense. However, fortunately for red, the mighty horse has immobilized the black horse, the black elephant and the black king. The Black King cannot retreat, so the elephant cannot move. And at this moment in time, uh, Red would have a stranglehold on Black's the, on the Black pieces on this flank. So how would the Red use the the humble pawn to win the game? B3 plus B3 equals to four. Uh, it is important, very very important, for Red to use his king to control the central file. Uh, in the manual, another, vari another variation that was given was R4 equals R4 minus five. I'm sorry, A4 minus five. And Red will simply continue with the moves given in the book. So in the main line, uh, A6 minus five was played. Another idle move. And the old pawn will be ready to search the mountains. Um, red, the red pawn would just make it to safety in the nick of time. And at this point, the only piece that black can move will be the central advisor. And with protection from the red horse, the red pawn will be able to clear all of black's material on the bottom rank and basically it, in this situation it would be a book win a book win and game for red checkmate so <coughs> although this is a very uh, unusual uh, situation that you can see in actual play uh, nevertheless it will be important and nice to have uh, the, the, fun, the concept of such an attack in, your, in the back of your mind. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and uh, I hope to 
I will be trying to do more in the future. I have a slight cold now, so please forgive my voice.